Hi everybody, tonight we're going to talk about aggregate supply. We're going to discuss the short run aggregate supply curve. We're going to talk about shifts in the short run aggregate supply curve, three factors. We're going to talk about the long run aggregate supply curve and then we're going to talk about the step from the short run to the long run and see what that looks like in a graph. So let's start with the definition of aggregate supply. Aggregate supply shows the relationship between economy-wide production and the aggregate price level in a fashion similar to the aggregate demand curve which went this way just like our industry demand and supply curves ran. In the short run there is a positive slope to the short run aggregate supply curve. It's a little bit redundant. Um, in the long run the curve is actually vertical at something that's called the natural level of GDP. Now we're going to handle each of these separately to discuss why the curve is like this and then in the long run why the curve would be vertical. Let's start by talking about the short run aggregate supply curve. So let's think uh, by example here. If the price of a unit of output is rising faster than the cost of producing in the unit of output, what's going to happen? Well, a producer who's looking to make a profit is going to produce that unit. This is why economists believe that the short run aggregate supply curve looks like this. So why would it do that? Well, some prices are what we call sticky. That means they don't rise or fall very quickly in response to a change in demand. So things like labor and wages. So if there's an overall increase in the price level in an economy and a producer is going to look to increase production when there's an opportunity to make an additional profit, make more profit, what's going to happen? Well, prices are going to increase faster than the costs of production. So that producer is going to see an opportunity to increase output because at those increased level of output in the short run, what's going to happen? Profits are going to increase. Now, let's use a reminder, short run. What is the short run? We can remember this from micro. It's a period over time it's a period of time over which some prices are fixed. Now in this case it's production prices because we're talking about inputs to the supply of goods and services across the, uh, across the economy. Well, okay, so we're still talking about the short run aggregate supply curve. Let's talk about things that cause shifts in the short run aggregate supply curve. There are three main factors. The first is changing commodity prices. So commodities are a huge input to the prices of products and if there is a change in commodity prices let's say an increase in commodity prices what's going to happen well if my prices increase now we're talking prices of commodities rather than overall price level prices of commodities increase dramatically because they're such a significant input and they're also remember they're not a final product we're talking here aggregate price level we're talking the price level of final products if that's the case what's going to happen well, my profit will decrease as a producer and I will supply less at any aggregate price level of final goods and services. The second thing that can change that results in a shift in the aggregate supply curve in the, in the short run is nominal wages. So if, we, if the economy has time to experience a change in nominal wages, so we were talking about here sticky wages that have a tendency to be slower in, the, in their rate of change than actually the demand. Here we're talking about changes in, not, in, in nominal wages and the opportunity for some of those wages to actually increase or decrease. And as an input to my production, if wages go up, what's going to happen? Short run aggregate supply is going to shift to the left and my overall output is going to decrease. If my nominal wages go down, it means that I'm going to have increase in profits. And what's going to happen? My short run aggregate supply curve will shift out as I produce more. The third is changes in productivity, similar to our discussion in micro. If I can do more with the same amount, or I can even do more with less, meaning fewer inputs or few, uh, cost of inputs, then what's going to happen? I'm going to become more productive. I get a new computer. I get a more productive employee as that employee's level of education increases. Uh, or I have changes in, you know, changes in level of uh, technological innovation. 
what's going to happen? The shorter to aggregate supply curve is going to move out this way. If, if I don't see that change in productivity, if things actually get less productive, much more likely in this third factor you're going to say increases in productivity that cause me to increase my production. Here's a, a short summary similar to the table you saw a couple of nights ago. Pause if you want to take a look at this and let it soak in. Now, let's talk about the long-run supply curve. Why in the world is it vertical? Well, the difference between the short run and the long run, again, is that in the long run, fixed price production costs have time to shift. So there's no impact on aggregate output supply. What does that mean? Well, that means that, for example, if there's a fall in the aggregate price level, price of final goods and services, the long run gives me an opportunity to actually adjust so that the, the quantity of aggregate output supplied is unchanged because, again, if I'm a producer and aggregate prices fall, what's probably going to happen is those inputs, those, those fixed production costs, the commodities and uh, labor inputs, they're going to decrease as well. And what's going to happen is my supply, my aggregate supply in the long run is going to stay constant. Now, importantly, Long-run aggregate supply intersects the x-axis x -axis at the potential output. Potential output. What's that? Potential output is the level of real GDP the economy would produce if the prices, if all prices, including nominal wages, were fully flexible. Well, if that's the case, why then is there some? Why has there been over time a longer, a long-term rise in potential output? Remember, potential output being here the level of real GDP the economy would produce if prices were fully flexible. The truth is that over time there's been a long-term rise in potential output and you can see it here potential is the black line and the actual aggregate output is the blue line. Well there are three reasons. Number one is the increase in the overall quantity of resources available to the economy land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. The second is the increase in quality of, of the overall resources that we use, including a better educated workforce. We can just get things done uh, more efficiently. And then the third is technological progress. Um, our technology allows us to do a heck of a lot more in 2010 than it allowed us to do even in 1989-1990. So let's talk about moving from the short run to the long run. Um, the economy year to year fluctuates around the level of potential output. And you can see here again the blue versus the black. Some years real GDP lies below potential output. So let's take a look back there. Some years it's below potential output. and other years it's above potential output. And those are signs overall of a relatively weak economy relative to potential and a relatively strong economy. You can see here the last recession that we had that we're still coming out of actual aggregate output was far below potential output. Now, the aggregate demand aggregate supply model would tell us that the economy is always operating along that short run aggregate supply curve, but only sometimes does it coincide with the intersection of short run and long run. Short run aggregate supply and long run aggregate supply. The aggregate demand aggregate supply model also predicts that in the long run the economy will adjust where the short run aggregate supply intersects the long run aggregate supply at potential output. And again, if you, you're looking here at this actual versus expected, we'll also look more tomorrow at the intersection here between short run aggregate supply and if we superimpose a long run aggregate supply against that particular graph. So what's going to make this happen where we talk about the economy adjusting? To where the two intersect. Let's use two examples. Example one here is where we have short run aggregate supply sub one here. We have a situation there where, where there's excess output. Well what's going to happen if there's excess output relative to potential? Well nominal wages are going to go up because of low unemployment. We're going to have low unemployment because we have so much output going on relative to potential. If you have a bunch of people working as that low as that unemployment rate drops people are going to demand higher wages. Well, what's going to happen when we get higher wages? As we get higher wages over time, what's going to happen? As we learned earlier, that short run aggregate supply curve is going to move to the left. And then we're going to be looking at a different intersection from here 
to here. Conversely, if we have too little output relative to overall potential output, so if, we're, if our output is here, what's going to happen? We're going to have very high unemployment. When we have very high unemployment, people will be willing to work for less, so nominal wages will fall. And what's going to happen as a result of wages falling? Well, price level is likely to go down. Short road aggregate supply is likely to increase because we're going to have more people working and output will increase. Key concepts for this module. First, the short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. We talked about resource prices and the fact that they're sticky. This means that when the aggregate price level rises, nominal wages rise more slowly. And what does this do? This allows producers to earn more profit, so they will increase output. Second, the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical because in the long run, all prices are flexible. So price levels can adjust and keep that aggregate supply curve vertical, which means overall level of output is not going to change. Also, the long run aggregate supply curve is located at the economy's level of potential output. Again, this is the output that could be produced when all prices are flexible. All right, lots to talk about for tomorrow. That's it. Have a great night. And I will see you in class tomorrow.